little YouTube. This is Moon Doggy. Um, it's going to be a, a shorter version of a Wood Mac sawmill review. After about six weeks of having it, I've cut one tree. Um, most of that wood is from that tree. Um, there's a little bit more. Um, cut some stickers. Um, just been in the learning process and I wanted to share what I've learned and a little bit about the meal for those of y'all thinking about maybe buying one. Um, but I'll uncover it and we'll go from there. Okay, we're going to start with a little bit about the meal, um, the, the features on it. Um, I explained in a longer video, it has a 14 horse Kohler Command engine. I did get the electric start, $250 more. The meal was um, $39.50. Uh, just like it is. These, this is the the uh, lube or waterer or whatever you want to call it that, that lubes the blade. Um, especially need it in pine, I, I believe. I've found out so far. But it follows it down, comes down, comes around, and then down on the blade. And then when you engage the throttle, of course, it starts dripping out right here. Um, so they asked they had dish soap or pine saw. Um, Tells you the amount it had to that container which is appears to be a couple gallons um, air cleaner here a little bit about the command it ha does have a pull start in case the starter doesn't work gas tank this gas tank I'm not sure of the size of it but it does have sufficient amount to cut um, the tree that I cut down which is a 14 inch, di inch diameter tree it uh I got three eight-foot logs and a 12-foot log out of it that I cut. So um, it was plenty of gas to do that. Still had a third of the tank left. So that's that part. It does come on a pallet, and then a lift lift point here, and another lift point here. Now, that one's curved like that. I did not bend that. That's, uh, it actually came like that. So, um, I'm sure they thought that out. But um, back to the Cobra Command. This is your choke. And this is your fuel on and off. Um, it's it's not that loud. Um, I've thought about wearing earplugs and um, and probably will some, but it's not that bad without it. Um, the operator stands over here where you push it, and the um, exhaust muffler is over here. So you have. And on the opposite end, which makes it nice. So, so a little bit about the we put the it calls for the the two two by eights script, uh, nailed together, and we screwed them together. It didn't call for the long uh, four by four. I did almost put a six by six treated, but um, it's temporary. And since they didn't call for it, I figured that would be enough. Six by six were very expensive. I believe 60 something dollars a piece for a 16 foot. And this is a 20 foot span. So I did seam it down to the bottom with some metal brackets. Lag bolt, lag screwed in there. The bunks, um, all the same. They all have the spots for except on the end 
and that end down there they have the spots for the for the uh, log stop and I have that down it could be up the short this is a short one it could be as far as right there um, or on down because I was cutting one inch off the bunk I do have the longer log stops and I store them on that end piece down there they're quite a bit larger for the larger logs um, I saw in a can't so I didn't really need those um, and then the log dogs they came in and we have longer these are the short ones um, and I have them down pretty far so the long ones come way on out and then you just take this um, screw to secure down the log the dog I guess and pull it out and put it in the longer one if you need the longer one for a bigger log I'm assuming but there are the feet um, the thing went together pretty easy uh, pretty easy to level um, the biggest thing was you, you level the you put the end bunks down and you level those and, and that end and then you level the long way and then also when I leveled it all after I leveled it a little wave in the track where the wheel rolls right here along there on each one and I just took a, a dead blow and sledge and just bumped it over where I needed to and kept working with it. it took about five minutes to straighten it out um, I didn't beat on the metal I put a, a block of wood there and hit the block of wood so it wouldn't scar up the metal so a little bit about the meal as you can see you rotate this you turn this up it unlocks the, the little pin you can see out and then you rotate it up or down four rotations is an inch and a quarter um, so I'm assuming that I hadn't figured this out yet and it's probably in the manual how many how far from here to here I think that's the 16th um, but four rotations would not make that a 16th so it, you can very 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 much fine-tune it I did see a video of someone using a wood miser, and two turns were an, was an inch, and each hole was the sixteenth. Well, these are obviously way below a sixteenth, so, so like I say, you can fine tune it down to cut as much as you want. Um, came with this removable, and you can order up more if you need them. It's 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 a magnet. And it's a scale, wood, miser, wood max scale. Um, it has all the scales if you're going to cut. You use that, I always use this, this because this is what's... This, this scale on the right is, is the actual inch of scale. And that, that's the inches off the bunk. So I had that set. I had measured the blade. And then come over here and measure this and move this up and down and adjusted it say say my blade i measure i move this up to here and measure down and say it's four inches five say five inches off the bunk what it looks like then i make sure that that five inches is dead on right here and you you get a level cut every time um, has an emergency stop. I could figure out when I first set it up, went to crank it, I pulled. I mean, I, I choked and tried to let you start crank it uh, a ton of times and couldn't figure it out. And finally, I said, Oh, this is the emergency stop. So you just twist it, locate it because it gets pushed in, it stops it. 
and then you just twist it and it resets it. I showed you where the crank was to crank the, the, the saw head up and down, which goes up and down on this bunk. And I mean, not bunk, but uh, this support and this support. It's a full post design. A lot of them have two post designs, including, I believe, wood miser. If I'm not mistaken, they're smaller mills. So this has a full post design. It's a little more stable, um, I'm assuming. I uh, thought it was a good thought to, to do that. Um, but it goes up and down right here. This is the adjustments for the lock. It's unlocked right now. Um, same here. You got adjustments on there so that when you want to get the saw head at your correct height then you just lock these down it would have been nice if it had one lever for that um, very much nicer but uh, I find that I don't even need those after I cut the the flitches off or the slabs off the, the rounded ends to square up the cant this little Thing. It's just, um, I thought they forgot to send me the keys, and I found the keys in the bottom of this. And uh, just looking around, and uh, the, it's got the manual and the, um, the motor warranty things and all that in here. So you've always got a hard copy manual right there. Um, Looks like 4.4 hours I've run on it so far. So, um, air filter, I checked this after I ran it the other day uh, for the four hours and it's just like it's brand new. There's nothing on it so far. Um, these two here and here adjust, you loosen those and adjust the throttle height the push bar to your liking so I put it there that's about a little above my belly button between my belly button and my chest height it's perfect height for me because my arm is is level when I'm pushing my elbow my forearm is, is level so um, it seems to work good for me but it's easily adjustable uh, I did have to adjust the throttle cable. Um, it had only throttled up about halfway. Had a hard time going through the log when I first started. And I said, this, this thing ought to run better than that, cut better than that. So yeah, that's what that was. So I got to, I adjusted the cable, got it up to full throttle now. Um, which when you engage this, it, it starts the blade up. It, and you crank it there and then it's running and then this engages the blade starts the blade running and then you ease through the ease into the, the log the uh these are the lifts for the lift the saw head up and down that are connected down there this is a, a blade tensioner which I had a took me about three logs to get it the first log I cut I did not have my um didn't want to tension it too much and I did not have my uh um torque wrench so the next time I brought my torque wrench I torqued it to the they said between 25 and 30 foot pounds so that's what I did and you just put the torque wrench and the nut on here and just torque it till it clicks. You're done. I always take the tension off the blade. The blade adjustment. I'll show you what that is in a minute. Um, you open the open the uh, cowl. I would guess it would be called. And. Uh, Open it up like this. There's a little latch on the bottom also that hooks the bottom of it up. So this is the drive pulley. Um, 
they say that bait adjustment, I mean, well, belt adjustment needs to be, it's, it's doing fine right now. Um, I don't know if it needs to be any tighter than that. About a quarter inch of play, that's a little bit more. But there's um, bolts to slide the, this, this bolt, this bolt. And you got one bolt under here and one on the other side under there. Um, and then you just turn that and it it moves it back or forth, tightens it, of course, and loosens it a little bit if you got too much tension on the belt. Um, the belts do look fine. Um, no wear whatsoever. Um, I always get it sawdust on this one. It's uh hasn't affected it any um, it's very easy to to adjust the blades um, it says about three eighths of an inch out um, three eighths of an inch out here um, so to adjust that <clears throat> on the this this pulley is you just rotate this you just loosen this this jam nut and tells you counterclockwise to move forward clockwise to move it back the blade back very simple instructions but it goes back clockwise counterclockwise the blade will track forward on here and the way you look at it you just turn it hand and watch it and if the blade moves as you're turning it a couple turns if it starts moving in then you know you need to counterclockwise to move the blade forward same way over here won't go through that same design here um, hadn't had to adjust this one yet um, just that one um, but there it is same thing tells you how to adjust it the, right there so um, Getting back to some of the meal. This is a, um, it appears to be close, but um, it's designed like that. I have it, I had it sitting out this way, but the last log I cut, I had to move it back in. But it sits out so it'll hit that when it's up before your blade hits it. Right now, if you weren't watching and this was up too high, Watch your cutting, then obviously the blade would hit it. But I had moved it out because the log that I was cutting came out past this, came out. So this was hitting the log right here before it went on. So I had to move it out away to cut that first side of the cant, or well, actually two sides, and then. Then, then I just never did move it back. I was just watching. Um, everybody says you're eventually going to hit a hit a uh, stop sooner or later. I hadn't hit one yet, but it's, but it's early. Um, this is let's get sawdust on it, and, I, and it's wet when I. That's why I don't clean it off right away. Cause I'd just be doing some scraping, um, kind of like let it dry. Um, but as you can see, that pulley is moving right there. I mean, pulley um, bearing is moving, and there's adjustment to go up or back. So you just barely want a, a sheet of paper to fit in there. Same way here, you see that one is moving. It's got a little pitch on that one, pine pitch. You see now this this one's adjusted fine, but this one. Before I start up the meal, I want to adjust that's too much play in it. Um, and I'll, I'll bring it forward, measure from here, blade to here, and the blade to here. And I'll know whether to bring this up or down so, you, so your blade will be level. Um, 
this is a, when you close the door, it won't, it won't, it won't start until you close the door. This is a safety feature. Um, won't let you run the mill with it open. I guess they don't want your hands getting caught in there, and I wouldn't want my hands or, or the blade could come off. So yeah, it's safety features. But there's a, I don't know if you can see it. There's a Allen wrench that goes in here, hex, hex wrench that goes in there. And you can loosen that, move it up or down, tighten it back up, loosen, tighten, tighty, tighty. Um, the, the slide's pretty easy, um, as you can see. that it's not sitting right in the center but that keeps it I guess from wobbling and I hadn't had any problem at all it pushes great I can sometimes push it and let go of it and it'll almost still roll so it's smooth you do want to keep it clean um, and also keep your bunks clean for instance there's a little bit of pitch and a piece of bark well, that's going to throw that, just scrape all that off. You don't want, as you're sawing, you don't want sawdust to build up here. Because that will raise this end of the cant. Or this end of the cant from down here. So you want, you got your bunks level. You want to keep everything level. Okay, now this is down here. Which is just from, you loosen this one and this one. And you loosen it, and this bearing block assembly and all, all that moves forward. So you so you got an eight inch cant. You'd come out. You'd come in about right here. So your blade has more support. Doesn't move up and down like that. Of course, the you know, tighten the, these, and all these parts. They say. You can get them all at local hardware. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I, I really question that, but uh, who knows? I am going to order two two sets of these. That one, and this one, of these bearing blocks, I believe they're called, and then these, and just have them as spares. Because obviously I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm even an hour away from where I live. Um, so I get up here once or twice a week. Um, I probably won't order the belt. Seems like, seems like it's a standard looking belt with the pitch. I don't know. I won't order one until that shows a little more sign of wear. That's basically it. My... I really like it. Um, so far, it's a learning curve. Don't fool yourself. Um, it definitely is a learning curve on, on getting the blade to track just right and cutting the lumber. Oh, by the way, do not, absolutely do not back up with the, with the mill. If you do, you back up so ever so slowly. And I don't have a piece of lumber. Uh, log on here but if you're going through the log and you of course this is bigger but say that's your curve as you're going through the log and you've gone through say three or four feet and you need to for some whatever reason back up well that curve is closed on this end and then your blade is on up into the log take a screwdriver or something pry bar and wedge it in there to open that curve. It makes that blade back out so much easier. And it's better to have it running and back it out slowly. Uh, if you do switch it off, you can get it out. I have got it out switching off. You just have to ease it back, make sure your curve is open, and make sure that the blade doesn't slide forward and hit this. Now, 
if you blade a run a blade by backing up and this came off and hit down in here and messed up some teeth so um, I had already hit two screws with the blade um, but it wasn't that bad until it came bottom lines do not back up if you can help it um, but I had to because it wasn't tracking right um, I was diving I was going up the blade was going up as it was coming along and that's just not having all that adjusted right so a little learning curve on my first one um, I've got three two befores under there that I got a resaw that are probably about three inches on one side and two inches on the other where the where it drifted up on me um, so changing the adjusting and changing the blade made a huge difference on that um, the last thing I saw was these three two by eights nice they were really nice everything worked great it saw through there easy um, that was out of a top log on the tree um, but I still got that the two by eights I got an eight foot can out of it so what I'm gonna do is go up I, I saw the tree down about six seven weeks ago I don't know if you can see it. the other side of the garden up there. You can see the dead top right up in there. Um, but I saw that tree down. And I'm going to go back and see if I can get a four foot piece out of it to saw up because I need more four by fours to set my next stack of lumber on. So there's a four by four, four by four, four by four that I sawed. Um, so, and they're working out fine. They, I threw a smaller level for straight edge on that and there's no sag right there it's it's doing great um but when you st stack your lumber the one thing you're gonna want to do is at least stack two inch together one inch together if you're gonna cut siding stack your siding together because it's gonna be a little bit different because of the the curve um, and uh, have have some stickers I didn't have any stickers I wasn't gonna go buy any so I decided I'd cut stickers out of the the, the slabs and not not I could have got one inch lumber out of that uh, one by fours one by sixes maybe even one by eight see this that's a piece there I could have cut some stickers out of that still might um, it's still pretty good. It's got a little bit of a bow in it where it's just been sitting out. Um, but it'll, I can cut stickers out of that next time I cut. Um, but yeah, that, that's... Um, I had it with a tarp. You don't want to put a tarp on it. A tarp won't let the air flow underneath it. Um, I intended on pulling this tin off a lean-to on a shed and using it well uh, never got around to it came came out here one time um i'll show you a little short clip of when i drove up and um a, a dead sweet gum it fell right in the middle of it didn't have anything under there because i'd already cleaned it out for for the for the to get ready to tear it down um so yeah i got all that tore down um well, I couldn't saw for a day, day and a half that I came up here, um, just tearing that down and cutting up the lumber and the, and the kindling and that sort of thing. And have some more to do with your flitches. Um, figure out what you're going to do with them. The stack is off of one tree. And that's what I got all the way down to smaller stuff, but I cut that up one day and covered it up and I'm going to take it. I got a firewood rack at the, where we live and an outdoor fire pit. So we're going to have many a night of burning, burning flitches. <laughs> but I like doing that. I like staying out as much as possible and getting out of the house. So even if it's just in the yard. So my initial impressions. Hmm. I really like it. 
I said many a time it's a learning curve. Yeah, learning curve for sure. Um, but not not that bad. I wasn't expecting to come out and cut perfect lumber the first time out. But I do have some perfect lumber in that stack. So that's a win in my book. Um, can't think of anything. Um, hadn't really. I'm pretty close on the on the, on most of the lumber. Um, I hadn't figured out. I was I was giving it an eighth of an inch for the curve, and I think it's probably. I don't know if it's an eighth of an inch. It may even be a sixteenth of an inch. The the back of the blade is definitely a sixteenth of an inch or less. But then you have the set on these teeth. You got this one is level. This one is up. And this one is down. So the the level up down level up down and that set. Of the teeth one way or another you can see this one a lot better it's up down level level up down so that removes the sawdust out of the curve oh, nice big spider in there uh, I'm not sure what it is but I'll leave him alone he won't stay in there long as I cut in a day so I'm gonna cut another southern yellow pine today 13 14 inch diameter I uh, probably won't get it all cut up um, and I do have some paint to paint the ends. Although, you see the sky here. Around 2 o'clock, we're supposed to get a front come in. Uh, heavy rain. So, I don't know if if, if I can get, get it cut out and go ahead and paint the ones I'm not going to cut. I'll do that today. It's latex, so should dry pretty quick. But I didn't paint these. But as you can see... I need to come out with this or go that way with that lumber it's getting wet on the end but as you can see there are absolutely no checks none um, and I'll put a moisture meter on it in, in, a, in a bit and come back to you got this moisture meter ask me how I know it's a moisture meter I put a sharpie on everything seems like it's one of my vices um, I'm never anywhere without a sharpie and a lot of times I I'm walking around with one in my pocket but here's the moisture meter I bought um, they had one at Harbor Freight and I looked at it but it says only in stores couldn't order it online and the nearest Harbor Freight is about well from here it's an hour no from here it's an hour and 45 minutes from where I live it's about 45 minutes so uh, I bought this one, um, and uh, it's just a cheap one. I don't know what I paid for it. I don't put the battery in it, so I'll put the battery in it, and we'll check those two by fours and see what the moisture is. They've been sitting there about six weeks, and we'll check a one before also on the other end, which is covered. That end, I quite quite didn't get the tin covered up on it, but. I'll be back when I get the battery in. Okay, as you can see, I have the moisture meter. Um, all set and ready to go. Reading zero moisture. Well, let's just sit, let's just get the end butt of this 4x4 four four and we'll see what we got. 34%. It's late September and it has been raining. Usually September is dry. Okay. Now this one, because it's not the end, I guess the end which be, should be dry. I don't know why that's. I guess because it's bigger. This one's only 23. Um, this little flitch here. I mean, uh, sticker is 21. Okay. So the two by four on the side was 23. Let's check it on the end. And on the end it's 21. So you can see the ends dry quicker. Um, not a big difference, but yeah, a little bit. I got some of that room on this end. 
to move that tin down some. It was quick. I had to do it quick. It was raining the other day. Um, but I wanted to go under here and catch one of these um, one by. Well, there's one on the end and the one by is can't read it. Let's get another bite on it. It is One by 35, but that's one I just cut on this last week. I cut it out of a, um, I had saved it and threw it over here for, um, to cut stickers. And then I, I don't know, that'll make a good one by six, so I, I did that. Um, and so it's a little damp still. It's just been under there, not even a week, so 34%. I think I'll be lucky if I get it down to 18% um, in the middle, not on the ends. Um, being out here in the deep south in this moisture, so um, 18%. And just let it sit there and the air dry. Uh, I do plan on building a solar kiln, so that'll be in a video coming up. But I'm about to go cut some wood, but this wraps up the the Wood Max Sawmill Review. Oh, um, one other thing. It does cut 26 inch opening. So this will go out to here. You can actually go out to there and cut a 26 inch opening. You can cut a larger diameter tree. Wait a minute. Sorry. It opens to 20 inches which means you can cut a 26 diameter tree. I have seen people keep flipping the log, flipping the log and cutting little bitty flitches off and getting it whittled down and then to a 20 inch and then coming along and cutting it. Um, so we'll see, I hadn't cut anything that big yet. I have some that big. I'm thinking about cutting that lightning killed pine. It's been dead for a while. On the inside it's gonna be some the hardwood is going to be good. The outside probably not going to be. It's going to be a little um, pulpy or pecky or whatever they call it. Um, but the, the inside hardwood is going to probably be as hard as a brick. What they call fat lighted. Um, so it'll make some good dimensional lumber, some beams or whatever. Uh, one other thing I forgot is these things um, keep your meal from rolling off the edge of the edge of the track. Same thing on the other side. Um, I think most all meals have that. Probably at one time or another, somebody rolled one off. So um, it's a good safety feature that they, I think they all have. So even the cheaper meal than this, like the Harbor Freight and stuff, has the stops on the end. So yeah, it's just, just another thing. Any questions um, that you might want to know if you're thinking about getting one, um, feel free, by, by far, feel free to ask. Um, just ask in the comments and I'll, I'll answer them. Um, but uh, don't mind answering the questions, just, just let me know or, or you just have a comment, comment. And uh, this is gonna be a part of a, um, a series of videos not just cutting uh, wood on a bandsaw mill but um, it's going to be called Moondoggy's Homestead Journey and this is I live in LA lower Alabama and about a mile from the Gulf Coast I mean mile, about an hour from the Gulf Coast um, north of Pensacola Beach so just over into Alabama and it is hot and humid here and I I'm 60 years old so I do not want to semi-retired I do not want to spend my retirement years in this heat because four or five months out of the year I'm sweating just walking around talking it's uh and it's it's only like 9 30 in the morning here so late September so, so I want to go where it's cooler 
I know a lot of people up north want to come where it's warmer. Um, like the famous Jimmy Buffett song. I want to go where it's warm, but um, yeah, I want a happy medium in there somewhere. Um, but this will be a part of that series of videos that that start a journey of finding land in the Appalachians and 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 completing it as far as, as buildings, buildings and cabins and we want to build our kids some cabins. But I'll have a video, video, YouTube video on that and just sit down and talk about what this channel is going to be about. And that's going to come up pretty quick. Actually, I've already made one. I just did not like it. Um, I was a little random with what I'm saying and, and I tend to do that. So, um, but um, I've I already talked to some local people and they said, yeah, that's uh would be very interesting um to to have a YouTube channel like that. So um like minded people obviously. Um there's some people that are gonna watch watch people play videos. That that just befuddles me that that there are YouTube videos out there that and there's YouTube videos and everything, but it's a video of someone sitting at a computer screen playing a video and commenting on it and most of the time they're talking trash ugly which is another thing i won't have on this site you won't hear me i'll be respectful because um a lot of you probably have children and grandchildren and thinking about getting this and they want to get them interested i have one son that's really interested and another one that's moving back from Texas it's 24 um, and, and he may be interested so um, and they all might at one time but at least two of the sons are kind of interesting in it they just like getting out and spending time outdoors so we'll, we'll, we'll see um, whatever you can do for young people to get them away from the world that we have nowadays um, the better. Uh, I won't go into that. I'll go into that. I'll, I preach about that a lot. <laughs> about the, what this world is turning into. And, and uh, I want to get back to nature. You, know, you can probably hear the crows up in that dead pine. But uh, I just love stuff like that. Um, I am living on the river, so this is it's a wooded area. It's in a horseshoe bend of a river, and the river's down in here. And uh, a little lot so we'll wind up selling this one day I'm moving up to the Appalachians but I'm keeping this until obviously the store tractor and, and all and, and cut to wood here and when we get a place up there we'll we'll uh we'll start moving all this there 